Today we're going to talk about making Tai Chi your own. Making it your own expression that it's helping you be the best you can be. And it goes along with what we discussed last week with our breathing, where we wanted the eight descriptive words of breathing to come together in a good recipe that became natural breathing for you, that it was natural for your body, that it flowed with the movements, and that it helped your body relax. And that's what we want in making Tai Chi your own. We don't do Tai Chi for perfection. Right? We do it for progression, to help your body be the best it can be. You know, as Dr. Yang Zhuing Ming says, if you've been my student for several years and you still look just like me, you're not a good student. You need to make Tai Chi your own, that it becomes an expression of what your body can do and how it can help you be the best you can be. Now we need to understand there are a few boundaries, if you will. We, we need to make it our own, but for example, if I were to do this movement and say I'm doing brush knee, that's wrong, <laughs> right? That movement is wave hands like clouds. So we can't just say, well, Mine is, this is brush knee. No, that, that doesn't work. We also have to work within the construct of applying the underlying principles. Yes, we want to acknowledge our own bodies and our own expression, but we want to do it within those boundaries of understanding the underlying principles. For example, let's do brush knee, the real brush knee, together. If you're holding the ball to the right, step out left and brush knee. Now think about the principle of moving from the Dantian here. Stepping out, brush knee. And if we move from the Dantian, we're going to keep our columns intact. Our shoulders are going to harmonize with our hips. One more, stepping out, brush knee. If we keep our eyes on our opponent, if we have a sense of an opponent, we're going to keep our eyes on the horizon. We're not going to be looking down at our feet, which actually helps keep us more balanced. Right? So working within those principles is actually very important. So again, hold that ball and brush knee. Now your brush knee may not look exactly like mine, and that's okay. That's part of the purpose of what we're going through today of making Tai Chi your own. But you still need to think about those underlying principles. How can I use those principles to help my body be the best it can be? Let's do part the wild horse's mane. Holding that ball to the right again. Stepping out, now that left hand comes high. Think about the rotation in this movement, how it helps your body relax. Part the wild horse's mane. One more. Part the wild horse's mane. So we still want to acknowledge and utilize all of the underlying principles as we make Tai Chi our own. But another way I want you to look at it is I want you to acknowledge your unique self. I want you to acknowledge where you are in your experience with Tai Chi, where you are in your experience with life, where you are in your experience, just in your own body type. Don't try to be Diane, for example. You aren't me. I'm the only Diane there is, okay? 
you need to be you and you need to acknowledge your own strengths and limitations. Let's take kicks, for example. Bringing your weight over to the left. Remember your column here. Remember your substantial and insubstantial. You want to let your right leg become completely empty before you try to lift and kick. Now bring your weight over to the right, bringing that weight all the way over. Let the left leg become empty. Lift and kick. Now remember, the height of the kick makes no difference. This is where you acknowledge your unique self in where you are with your Tai Chi, where you are with your balance. Because the point is not how high can I kick. This can be a kick. This can be a kick. This can be a kick. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're balanced. That's what Tai Chi is all about. That's what we want to, what we want Tai Chi to help with our expression of our, what we're doing in our Tai Chi as an exercise. Think about the, everybody's favorite move, snake creeps, pheasant stands. That needs to become your movement, acknowledging your unique self. Where are you with your flexibility? Where are you so that you can do that snake creeps and still be relaxed and natural through this movement? Allowing your body to get the benefit of relaxation from Tai Chi. So remember with your snake creeps, you're forming that bird's beak. Step out with this left. Now lower your center of gravity, turning, bringing your weight over this front leg, letting the back leg become empty, and come into your pheasant stands. Your snake creeps might be more upright than what I can do. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Remember we're doing Tai Chi for progression, not for perfection. So as you practice and as you challenge yourself, think about today I can go this low and this feels good. Maybe tomorrow I challenge myself just a little bit more. And maybe the next day it doesn't feel so good. That's okay. <laughs> Acknowledge that too. Especially as we get older, some days are better than others, right? But that flexibility, if you allow yourself to relax and acknowledge your own body, it will get better as you practice. Same thing with pick the needle up from the sea bottom. Remember, as we're going into pick the needle up, we're going fair lady works the shuttle. And then we do Fair Lady Works the Shuttle. And then we pick the needle up from the C bottom. We allow this left leg to be empty. We have to utilize those principles, lowering that center of gravity, keeping our eyes on the horizon. Remember, you don't have to pick anything up. Just acknowledge this may be as low as you can go. That's your pick the needle up from the sea bottom. That's totally fine. Coming back up. And just like snake creeps, perhaps you can increase your flexibility a little bit at a time. The next idea about making Tai Chi your own, we actually get to have a guest now to do the form. Our cameraman is going to come out from behind the camera and he's going to help, he's going to do the form with me because I want you to see different interpretations of the same movements. Come on out, Jim. When we do the form and we make it our own, sometimes with a different body type, 
with a different expression of how you view the movement, it can look just a little bit different. It is, we're actually doing the same movements. It's not like I'm saying this is brush knee, right? But you'll see as Jim and I do this form that our, we look a little bit different and that's okay. So this time through the form, I actually want you to just watch instead of participating, watch and note the differences between the way I do it and the way Jim does the form. So take a nice deep breath in, breathe it out, sinking down, and open. Preparation. Part the wild horse's mane. Part the wild horse's mane. Part the wild horse's mane. White crane spreads its wings. Brush knee. Brush knee. Brush knee. Play the guitar. Repulse the monkey. And ward off. Grasp the bird's tail. Roll back. Rotate and press, pushing chi, coming to the other side, ward off, grasp the bird's tail, roll back, rotate and press, Pushing Chi. Coming into a single whip. Wave hands like clouds. Single whip, high pat on horse, kick smash and box the ears. Kicking left, snake creeps. Pheasant stands, snake creeps, pheasant stands, fair lady works the shuttle, fair lady works the shuttle, pick the needle up from the sea bottom, fan through the back. Deflect, intercept and punch, pushing chi. Return the tiger to the mountain and close. Thank you very much. So you can see just in 
different body types, different interpretations of movements, there are slight differences. And that's okay. That's a good thing. That's because we've learned to make Tai Chi our own, to express that Tai Chi in our own bodies so that we're getting the relaxation, so that we're um, getting the benefits of better balance, of letting our bodies be the best they can be with this wonderful exercise. Mm -hmm.